So in this video, we'll be doing a running back tier list. We did quarterbacks about a week ago. That was a video that some of you liked, some of you disagreed with. I know people were like, how do you like Kyler Murray more than Daniel Jones? Well, it's more than just looking at the numbers for me. This is more of like how talented do I think they are and stuff like that. It's not just me looking at the numbers. Obviously, I'm not a pro scout, but I could just I feel like some players when I watch them are better than others, and I definitely put that into account for this list as well. So hopefully you guys enjoy this list. If you want another list, like this in the future, maybe wide receivers or tight ends next or something like that, then let me know and let's get into it. So we will start at the very top with the superstars slash elite, just like we did with quarterbacks. A lot of these categories are the same, honestly, but just different position. So I have two superstars in my mind for running backs. I mean, you can definitely make the argument for a guy like Ezekiel Elliott, even Derrick Henry, I think, based on what he's done the past two years. I think even Joe Mixon, you have an argument because that guy is such a talented player, but like is in such a bad environment on a bad team that he can't put up numbers that I think he's capable of doing. But like, I think him individually as a talent is such a good player, but I figure that would just, you know, cause too much controversy. So. The obvious one's Christian McCaffrey. This guy put up, I think it was the third season in NFL history, having a thousand rushing yards or more and a thousand receiving yards or more in one season. So obviously that guy does it all. He's been great since he's been in the NFL. He's been durable. He does it all. He just got paid a lot of money too. So good for him. And the guy next to him, Saquon Barkley. So any Giants fan who's followed me knows I was not a fan when the Giants took Barkley. I don't think taking a running back in a time that should have been rebuilding for the Giants was a good idea, but I've always admitted that Saquon Barkley, from a talent standpoint, is one of the best players in football. I've admitted many times I think he's the most talented running back in football. Obviously, he missed some games last year with his ankle injury, and between that and having not that great of an offensive line, even a system with Pat Shermer, it kind of hurt him. So, you know, obviously in Saquon's rookie year, he had so many big plays. He was very exciting. I think year three is big for him. He has to prove that he can play for a full 16 games, which I do think he will. And uh, the guy's one of the best talents in the league. So I'm sure Cowboys fans will argue, well, look at Ezekiel Elliott's numbers compared to Saquon Barkley. But when I watch those guys play, which I do watch a lot of them play, because obviously I watch a lot of NFC East football, I just think Saquon Barkley is a much better talent. You can hate me all you want for or disagree, but I just think Saquon Barkley is on a different level talent-wise. I know Zeke has the numbers, but if you put Saquon Barkley in Zeke's situation, I think he does even better, honestly. So you have to take that in consideration as well. Next, we have the great running back. So we'll start with Zeke. I talked about him a little bit. He's put up great numbers since he's been in the league in 2016, I believe, was his first year. He had one year where he didn't reach 1,000 yards, but he was very close because he got suspended for six games. But the fact that he almost got 1,000 rushing yards and missed like six games is very impressive. So I did admit that based on his offensive line and you know good weapons around him, I think Zeke has it made for a running back, and I don't think he's as talented as a guy like Saquon Barkley. But Zeke is a top five, even probably top three running back in football. I think it's between him and Derrick Henry in my mind. I would not argue if you said top three, though. I think Zeke's a great talent. I think he benefits from playing on a good team, though. Next is Dalvin Cook next to him. So Dalvin Cook was a guy that I was, like, really high on last year for, like, fantasy football reasons and stuff like that. I knew that if he stayed healthy, this guy would put up some ridiculous numbers. And he had an injury towards the end of the year last year, but he proved that he is a big play threat and just a tremendous running back in general. He can do it all, the receiving game as well. Breaks off many big runs. He's one of the fastest players in the league, and... He's a guy that should be getting paid a lot soon, so hopefully for his sake that happens. Next is Derrick Henry. Um, this one, you can argue, could be a superstar because I think he's led the league in rushing the past two seasons, if I remember correctly. So um, when he first got in the league, it was a bit of a transition. He was behind DeMarco Murray for longer than people expected. But once Murray retired, that's when Derrick Henry became crazy. He was in a good system, a really good offensive line there. I think he benefits from a good situation as well. But Derrick Henry himself makes a lot of men look like children on the field. So so you can't, you know, deny that. I think in the playoffs, he was amazing, obviously. I think he just did all he could for running back in the playoffs. And, um, you know, the guy's a great player. So I was happy to see him get paid. I think it was like a four-year, $60 million deal. But Derrick Henry is not a great receiving back, and that has to be accounted for in this because I do think in today's NFL, being a receiving running back as well as just a good ball carrier is very important. But Derrick Henry is kind of one-dimensional in that sense. He's not the best route runner, not the best receiver. So I do have to take that into account. But if I want a guy to get me a fourth in inches, I'm probably picking Derrick Henry out of all the people on this list. Next to him is Joe Mixon. I talked about Mixon has been on a bad team basically his whole 
whole career. He was a guy that dropped in the second round, I believe, because of his off-the-field stuff and that bad video that came out about him. So, I mean, talent-wise, the guy is amazing. If you go back and watch his film, there are many times where the blocking is not good, but he makes yards out of nothing, basically. And I think Joe Mixon is a guy that if he ever gets on a good team and has a good offensive line, and if Joe Burrow is the real deal and the outside weapons for uh, Cincinnati can become you know, consistent, good players. Hopefully A.J. Green can stay healthy and Tyler Boyd and uh, I forget who they drafted in the second round, but I think it was T. Higgins. If those guys can be solid contributors, I think it'll make Joe Mixon's life easier. They get Jonah Williams back for the offensive line. So maybe Joe Mixon makes a lot of noise this year, but I do think talent-wise, he's probably a top five running back for sure in my mind. Next guy I absolutely love, Nick Chubb. He was a guy I took in fantasy football last year. Definitely paid off. I think he was second in the NFL in rushing yards. He was like four yards away from 1,000 rushing yards his rookie year because he started the year behind Carlos Hyde, who was a Brown for like eight games in the first uh, first year of his career. But Nick Chubb is a great player. He's an underrated receiver. He's gotten better at that throughout his career. Another big play threat type of guy, but he can do it all. He can run you over and also take the ball to the house for 80 yards. So he's a, a running back that can do it all in my mind. So Nick Chubb is a great back in my opinion. Next we have Alvin Kamara who's a guy that I think, you know, just like some other guys on this list, benefit from a good system. Um, obviously playing for Sean Payton, who's had some many great running backs over the years. Once Mark Ingram left, we figured he would get better, but he kind of took a step back last year in terms of production. It really declined for him in the end zone. Uh, you can't predict touchdowns, but his touchdowns went down from like double digits to like, I think he had like maybe somewhere like five or six last year it was not a lot and people were disappointed about that so maybe his touchdowns will get better next year but that's really the only downside but as a receiver he's a great you know player in between the tackles I think is pretty underrated so overall he's a good running back he's not the type of guy that's going to get 300 carries in one season but as a receiver and as a running back that can get 10 to 12 carries a game he's a very efficient back and I think he's one of the better ones in the football and next to him is Aaron Jones so part of the reason I'm not a Mike McCarthy fan is because he kind of put this Aaron Jones guy in the doghouse for a long time then Matt LaFleur takes over and Aaron Jones has like 18 touchdowns or see I think he led the league in rushing touchdowns he was amazing last year he's a pretty good receiver a guy that just he's really shifty and can find the hole very agile and I like him a lot as a running back. Is he the best pass blocker? No, but he's gotten better at it. So that's why a lot of times they would play Jamal Williams over him. And that kind of annoyed me. And Mike McCarthy never wanted to give, um, I'm forgetting his name now, um, Aaron Jones, a full workload. And it kind of annoyed me. So once he got fired, I was like, oh, well, it's Aaron Jones time. And what do you know? The guy had a great season. So I was kind of annoyed by that. That didn't sit right with me for Mike McCarthy. But I'm happy Aaron Jones finally got to have a breakout year. I think next year he's in a contract year, so I'm expecting him to have a great 2020 season, and hopefully he gets paid a lot in uh, in the future. All right, so I'm going to try and speed this up like last video. I don't want it to be like 45 minutes again. So the good section, Josh Jacobs, he was a first-round pick, middle of the 20s last year, like 24, 26. Definitely lived up to expectations in my mind, had 4.8 yards per carry, over 1,100 rushing yards. And Josh Jacobs, from a talent standpoint, has never like, you know, jumped off the page to me, but like he always gets the job done, and he's a solid player. That's the only way I can describe him, so therefore he falls into the good section for me. Next to him is Kenyon Drake. So Drake he was a guy in Miami who was never given a featured role, then gets traded to the uh, Cardinals on a short week, starts against the Niners, absolutely dominates, and had some really good games for them down the stretch. I think from a talent standpoint, he's a good player, and I'm excited to see what he can do as a you know featured starter in 2020, assuming there is a season. Next to Kenyon Drake is Austin Eckler. So he's a guy that definitely benefited from Melvin Gordon's foolish holdout. He started for the first month of the year, was a great receiver for them. Um, pretty good in between the tackles runner. Um, it was a great, he was great last year. So many big plays for Austin Eckler. I think he just you know did better than most people expected. He's another guy like Kamara that won't have 300 carries in a season. But in terms of efficiency, he's a really good player. Definitely can play for my team any day. Next to him is Chris Carson, a guy that was a seventh round pick. I mean, Austin Eckler was undrafted but this guy was a seventh round pick. Uh, so Chris Carson's a great bruising back. I think he's the perfect fit for a Seattle Seahawks system that they run there. They're a downhill running team. They love to run the ball a lot. They play with a good quarterback and Russell Wilson. And I think the system's perfect for him. And Chris Carson can run people over, break off some big plays, definitely knows how to find the end zone. So I think Chris Carson's a good fit there. There are some injury concerns with him, but for the most part, he was healthy last year. So hopefully it stays that way for his sake. Next to Carson's letter for net. So 
I don't know if the Jaguars would have changed things if they can go back in the past because in 2017, you know, picking him third or fourth overall, whatever it was, it definitely worked out. Then in 2018, he got injured a lot, didn't have a good year. And then in 2019, had a good year numbers-wise. He barely could find the end zone last year, which was weird. But from a talent standpoint, Fournette was not too bad. I think based on the uh, on the direction that team is going, the Jaguars, he'll probably get traded in 2020 if I had to guess. And I do think he can help a contending team, so we'll see what the uh, future has in store for Fournette. Uh, next name is Melvin Gordon. So Gordon's a guy that I cannot tell if I like him or I don't like him. I, I and When he came in the league, I liked him. Then I was like, oh, I'm not too impressed. And then he had that really good breakout year. And then I was like, he's not that bad. He actually improved a lot as a receiver, in my opinion. So I have to give him credit there. He knows how to find the end zone for sure. So good receiving back. Back, pretty good in between the tackles. He's not the most efficient guy, that's for sure, and definitely gets injured sometimes. But for the most part, he's a solid running back. I personally don't know why Denver signed him when they have Philip Lindsay and, and Royce Freeman, but we'll see if that pays off in the future. Next to him is Mark Ingram. So Ingram had a long career with the Saints, has been one of the better running backs in football for the past decade. He's kind of been getting better as his career has been going on. So in 2018, Ingram had like a breakout year. Then 2019, got the PED suspension, kind of took a step back, then went to the... um, Went to the Ravens as a free agent, played behind a really good offensive line, played with a best dual threat running back in the, in football history maybe with Lamar Jackson, so that definitely made his job easier, and he was really good last year from an efficiency standpoint. But Ingram can do everything. He can run you over. He's a good pass catcher. He can break off some big runs, so I think he's a do-it-all type of back. He's now on the wrong side of 30, so we'll see if he starts to break down, but that's why I guess they drafted J.K. Dobbins to fill in for him just in case that happens. Next to him is Kareem Hunt. So Hunt... Had a great career with the Chiefs. It was cut short, obviously, because of what was caught on video, and he definitely deserved to pay for the consequences for what happened there. But as a uh, running back for a backup for the Browns, he was a third down back a lot. Got some early down work, but that was Nick Chubb's role for the most part. But he was still pretty good last year from a talent standpoint. I think if uh, Kareem Hunt was ever given a starting role again, he would definitely thrive. I think he's a good talent, so good receiver, good in between the tackles runner, breaks off big plays. I think Kareem Hunt has it all for a starting running back. And next to him is uh, Philip Lindsay. So Lindsay was an undrafted guy, a good story, back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. Um, his numbers will definitely take a hit in the future because of uh, Melvin Gordon. So if Gordon plays for basically close to a full season, I see no way that he three-peats 1,000 yards in a row. But, you know, that's just, I guess, uh, sometimes you have to sacrifice for the better good of the team, and we'll see if it pays off. But once again, I don't know why they signed Melvin Gordon, so I guess we'll see. But for Lindsay, he's a good receiver, a pretty good in-between the tackles runner especially for his size and a guy that can break off big plays and he's pretty agile so definitely a, a good complete back I always thought he would get injured but honestly did not have many injuries in his uh, NFL career so far so hopefully for his sake he uh, for his sake he stays healthy and has a good career from here on out next for the will be good slash great at some point the first one is Clyde Edwards Hilaire so I'm the type of guy that does not vouch for taking running backs in the first round but I think for the Chiefs it made a lot of sense they kind of they had Damian Williams. He was like a lifelong backup. He definitely was good for them because, you know, that's just an easy system for running backs. And I am such a huge fan of Clyde Edwards Hilaire talent wise. I think his center of gravity and his balance is like some of the best in football. So I think he'll have a great NFL career. He ended up in a good spot for his future success. And I think as long as he stays healthy, he'll be a great running back. I think he's honestly like CJ Anderson, but probably better. I'm talking about like the Broncos version of CJ Anderson, like early in his career, but he's probably better than him, honestly. So I'm very excited to see what he can do. Next to Edwards Hilaire is Darius Geis. So Geis, unfortunately, got hurt a lot early in his career, but... When he's played, including LSU, he's been a really talented back and break some big plays. There was a game last year, I think, against the Panthers. I know their defense kind of gave up at that that point because Ron Rivera was fired, I think, at that point. But he was just an animal in that game. I think if he stays healthy for a full season, that guy will put up some really good numbers and prove that he's one of the better backs in the league. But it really depends on his health. Next to him is Miles Sanders. So Sanders is a guy that... Kind of, I don't know how to describe Sanders, honestly. Like, he kind of just runs like a chicken with his head cut off sometimes. But, like, at the same time, he makes good things happen. He definitely has a lot of quickness, can break off big plays. He proved he's a really good receiving back last year. 
I think there's times where he could be more patient, but at the same time, he will get better as he gets older. So I think if he's given a starting role, which probably will happen um, from here on out with the Eagles, I think he'll prove he's a good back in this league for sure. And then next to him, we had Jonathan Taylor. So Taylor's a guy that went to the Colts, and he'll, I don't know if he'll back up Marlon Mack. I'm assuming he'll be a starter because he was a second-round pick. Um, put up some ridiculous numbers at Wisconsin. As I said before for Melvin Gordon, it's, probably, it's pretty easy for running backs to put up good numbers at Wisconsin. But at the same time, the guy still did it. He was awesome. Kind of reminds me of Arian Foster in a way, and I just hope he has a good NFL career. I'm rooting for him. Next to him is Devin Singletary. So Singletary was a guy that was a, I don't know if he was a third or fourth round pick last year for the Bills, but he played for them in some limited action because they wanted to play Frank Gore for God knows what reason. But when Singletary was out there last year, he proved that he is very shifty, can find the hole and break off big runs. I mean, he's a guy that I forget what school he went to. It was not a big school, but I was always a fan of his talent. He is a bit on the smaller side, but like he's a really good running back. He did pull his hamstring at one point last year, but if he stays healthy and is given the starting role, he'll have a nice career, I think. And I think he's backed up by Zach Moss now, who I also like. So we'll see what type of uh, split those guys do in the future and next to him is DeAndre Swift so Swift I believe went to the Lions and that's an interesting situation because they have carry on Johnson who I have on the bottom as a prove it type player but uh, DeAndre Swift's a guy that reminded me a lot of LaShawn McCoy based on like his juke moves and his shiftiness so he's a guy that I thought benefited from a great system with Georgia obviously a really good offensive line but going to the Lions it might hurt him a bit because their offensive line and their system isn't the best, and definitely having a healthy Stafford will help him. But I don't know how much he'll play if Kerryon Johnson is there. Of course, Johnson has to stay healthy, but if DeAndre Swift is given 18, 20 carries a game, I'm sure he'll do great, but I'm not sure how many carries he'll actually get. So I guess we'll have to wait and see about that one. And last year is Cam Akers. I forget what round he was, maybe third, fourth, or something like that, but Akers is a guy that played for Florida State, and he didn't have the best team around him, but he always found ways to break off. He kind of reminds me of Joe Mixon in a way, his situation. like He kind of reminds me of the situation Mixon was in because Mixon was not given the best supporting cast, but he always found a way to make big plays happen, which Mixon did. So Akers is a guy that's going to go to the Rams now. They have Darrell Henderson, I believe. They got rid of Todd Gurley, obviously. I don't know if Malcolm Brown is still there. I have no idea, but he doesn't matter. So I think if he's given a starting role, that Cam Akers will put up some good numbers. I trust Sean McVay. I know their offensive line got worse last year by a lot, but hopefully the Rams can put something together there. And if Cam Akers is given a starter's workload, I think he'll put up some good numbers. Next for the average slash serviceable section. So first I have Raheem Mostert, and that might rub uh, some people the wrong way. But he's a guy that I just think benefits from a great system. He led the NFL in all running backs in yards before contact. If you watch my Raheem Mostert video I put out recently, you'll know my argument behind it. I think if he was on a different team, his success would not be what it is today. But he definitely benefits from Shanahan's system and having some great run blocking there. Next is Sony Michelle. So I don't want to call him a bust, but I have not been a fan of Sony Michelle. He was great in the 2018 playoffs, but outside of that, I really don't know what this guy has done. He was very underwhelming last year. So definitely a prove it year for him next year, I would say, because if he sucks again next year, I feel like the Patriots, like, why would you even keep him at that point, you know? So Sony Michelle does not jump off the screen talent wise to me, and he has some knee issues a lot. So we'll see what happens there. But I guess he's average serviceable, but I don't think his career is trending in the right direction, to be honest. Next is Jordan Howard. So I forget what team Howard went to, honestly. I don't know if he's still on the Eagles or not. I probably should look this up pretty quick. But Howard's a guy that started with the Bears, had some good seasons there, and put up good numbers. He had like 1,300 yards one year. Then went to the Eagles, and it started out okay, I guess. But for the most part, he just wasn't really that great. He wasn't that effective. He actually went to the Dolphins, so that's not the best situation for running backs. But I think him and Matt Breda went to the Dolphins. So not sure what to expect from him there, but I guess Jordan Howard is a decent back. I bet he's like kind of as average as it gets. It kind of hurts him in like the Derrick Henry sense. He's not a good receiving back at all. His hands are not good. So that's kind of hurting him and uh, his ceiling. But I think as a just between a tackles runner and a powerful runner, he's not that bad of a player. I think his best days are behind him, unfortunately. He's still pretty young, but I don't think he'll be given a featured role like he was for the Bears. 
Next name is Damian Williams, a guy that I thought had a great year last year. I will admit that. But like Raheem Mostert, was in a great situation. I think could have won Super Bowl MVP last year. I know Mahomes obviously got it, but I think he could have won it because I think he just had a great game. Um, But Damian Williams is a guy that, as I said before, was a lifelong backup and went to a new team and all of a sudden he was this great guy. So I don't necessarily believe that. I think he's more of like between the guy he was in the Dolphins and what he was in the Chiefs. I think talent-wise, he's average, as average as it gets, honestly. But he did get the job for them, uh, job done for them last year. But with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire there, his future outlook for me is probably not going to be as good as it was last year or the year before. So we'll see. If Edwards-Hilaire gets hurt or something like that, then I'm sure he'll be fine. But I'm assuming that Edwards-Hilaire will be the main starter there for the Chiefs going forward. Next to him is Tevin Coleman. So Coleman last year was very up and down. He had some games where he absolutely destroyed people. I think against the Panthers, just like I was talking about Darius Geis before, against the Panthers he had like four touchdowns and a crazy performance. And then there were some games where Tevin Coleman did absolutely nothing. And sometimes it was a Raheem Mostert week. Sometimes it was a Coleman week. I think Coleman's been a lifelong backup for the most part. He backed up Devonta Freeman in uh, Atlanta for majority of his career. But he's a pretty decent back. He has good speed, can break off some big plays, but I guess he's average. I don't really have anything special to say about Tevin Coleman. He is making a good amount of money, so good for him. Next to him is Matt Breda, a guy that sometimes gets injured, but I think I'm a big fan of him. He definitely makes people miss, can break off big plays. I do believe he's in Miami as well, so not the best situation for a running back, but you know it is what it is. So we'll see what Matt Breda can do for Miami, but I do think talent-wise he is a good back, but I don't know if he can stay healthy and handle a full workload, so therefore I have to put him in the average section. Next to him is Marlon Mack, and Mack's had a pretty nice career for the Colts. I mean, I think this year is a contract year for him. They're going to transition to Jonathan Taylor, so my future outlook for him is definitely not that good. I think Max is average as it gets, but at the same time, when he was given a starting role, he wasn't that bad of a player. So I can't say he's bad, but he also wasn't great in my opinion. Next to him is James White. White is definitely not a between-the-tackles type guy. He can do it, but he's not going to rush for even 200 carries in a season. That would not happen, but as a receiving back, very good player. Can pick up yards when you don't expect him to. He can make people miss, and is one of the best receiving backs in the league. I think he's in a perfect situation, or he was at least with the Patriots. Not sure if him and Cam Newton will have the same chemistry. We'll have to wait and see about that one, but I think James White, for where he was taken in the draft, I think it was like a fifth or sixth round pick maybe, has been a great pick so far, and definitely has paid dividends for the Patriots. Next name is Latavius Murray. So he had a couple nice years with the Raiders. Then he went to the Vikings, filled in for Dalvin Cook, did very well there. Then went to the Saints. He wasn't that great last year. He was all right. He wasn't what Mark Ingram was, but I guess he was like maybe 80% of that. So he's a bit older now, but I think he still gets the job done. He's a bigger back, and I think he's pretty fast, honestly, for his size. I have to give him a lot of credit there, but he's average. He's not great, but he definitely gets the job done, puts up some pretty decent numbers. And next to him is Duke Johnson. So Johnson's a guy I've been a fan of. Of, but never gets a featured role unfortunately like I figured on the um, on the Texans last year it was perfect because Lamar Miller gets injured and then Duke Johnson's like the only running back in town but of course they signed Carlos Hyde who I'm pretty sure went on to lead that team in carries and then you know Duke Johnson does not get the featured role maybe this year it will happen but they got David Johnson now so probably not but I feel bad for Duke Johnson I feel like he should be a starter but he probably will never be given the opportunity so I do feel bad for him Next is prove it year. So these are guys that at one point were like either really good or some guys that were like higher draft picks. Like I don't want to say they suck, but like at one point they were either really good or just really high draft picks and now they have to prove it. So for David Johnson, he was at one point a really good player. He nearly had a 1000 rushing and receiving yard season until Christian McCaffrey did it this year, but at one point was a tremendous player. He was a good player the first half of last year. I definitely endorsed him as a fantasy football pick last year, and some people were mad about it, but like at the same time, he was really good the first half of the year, then sustained a bunch of injuries, and then he was not so good all of a sudden. So David Johnson is traded to the Texans. I think the Cardinals won that trade by a mile, but maybe he can go to the Texans and be effective. I'm not really sure what to expect. I think he's 27, 28 now. Johnson, I believe, is a former receiver. So he's a great receiving back. He's a pretty good running back as well. Had some really good years for the Cardinals, but it's a prove-it year for him based on his health. I like his talent, but he has to stay healthy for sure. Next to him is David Montgomery. 
So Montgomery was a guy that I definitely fell for last year in fantasy drafts. I took him way too early in many cases, but he was a starter for the Bears, and in most cases, they gave some carries to like Mike Davis and Tariq Cohen, but for the most part, he was a starter there, but I just, he definitely disappointed for sure, in my opinion. I just think Montgomery had such hype around him, didn't really put up the numbers. I mean, the run blocking there probably wasn't the best, but I do expect better from him in the future. I don't feel like he'll be as bad as he was in his rookie year. I don't know what to expect. I don't expect him to be a top five running back one day, but I do think he can be top 10 maybe. So hopefully Montgomery finds it somewhere in his career. He definitely has a lot of talent. It just depends. Can he put it all together? So he stayed healthy last year for the most part. He just needs the uh, necessary amount of carries. There were some games where he played really well and then some where he was like invisible. So it has to be more consistent for him. Le'Veon Bell is next. Of course, Le'Veon had a great career with the Steelers, but that's another place where running backs thrive for sure. So Le'Veon had like 3.2 yards per carry last year. It was really bad. I felt bad for him in a way because I could tell the talent was still there for Bell, but like his situation and the run block in the offensive line was so bad that the guy really couldn't do anything. But there were times last year where Le'Veon Bell looked like vintage Le'Veon Bell. So I think if he has the right system and run blocking in front of him, he'll be fine. But I'm not sure the Jets are good enough of a team to basically maximize his talent. So we'll have to wait and see. But he is making a lot of money, so good for him. Next is Todd Gurley. A guy that's been inconsistent throughout his career. He's had some really great years where he was like an MVP level type player and some where he was not so good at all. And I think those bad years were 2016 maybe and 2019. So last year I think it was a lot due to the injury. The offensive line for the Rams was pretty bad and he didn't miss any games I believe. But like Sean McVay definitely did not lean on him as much as they had in the past. He now goes to the Falcons, who definitely could not run the ball last year, whether it was a Devonta Freeman problem or a Quadriolison problem, an Edo Smith problem, a run blocking problem. We'll have to wait and see. I don't expect much from Gurley personally, but like he's a very talented player. He's 25 years old still, I think. So I'm not going to bet against him, but like I just don't have the highest expectations for him. But he seems like a nice guy. I wish him the best, but I just don't see it happening based on that situation there. Next is James Conner. So he's in a good situation. Of course, being on the Steelers is a great situation. Not having Roethlisberger sucked for that whole offense last year. Their offensive line is getting a bit older, and James Conner has had some injury history, so he has to stay healthy. If he can do that, he'll be fine. James Conner had that great second year when Le'Veon sat out, nearly had 1,000 yards, had a lot of touchdowns, was a good receiving back. I think he has the talent, just needs to stay healthy, and we'll see what happens. I think that offense will be much better, assuming that Roethlisberger is healthy for all 16 next year. Next to him is Ronald Jones, and Jones was a former second round pick, maybe third, second, something like that. But he was a guy that definitely was awful in his first year, and then his second year got a bit better. Had some good moments last year. He kind of split time with Peyton Barber. Um, I don't have the high, highest expectations for him. They got a rookie there now. I forget his name, honestly, but he was a pretty good back in college. I think he was a third-round pick, if I remember correctly, but um, definitely has some competition there. I don't have high expectations for him, but like, if you can't succeed next, next to Tom Brady, then I guess it's probably not going to ever happen for him. So hopefully Ronald Jones finds a way to do it. I don't think he's the most talented guy. I just, I don't know. I haven't seen it with him, but... We'll see if he can prove me wrong. Carry on Johnson, I've always liked as a talent. He was a second or third round pick from uh, from Auburn. And he's had some good moments in the NFL, but he's another guy that cannot stay healthy. He had an unfortunate injury last year. I think he was off to a pretty good start too, but just got hurt at a bad time. So that really sucked. And they drafted a running back in the second round, I believe, in DeAndre Swift. So I'm pretty sure he'll at least split carries. I'm pretty sure he's not the starter anymore. I'm sure that's Swift's job now, but we'll have to wait and see. But Carryon Johnson might be a guy that might go to another team in the future and be a, a good starter. He's still very young, so we'll have to see what happens with him. But it definitely is a prove-it year for him. And Rashad Penny is a former first-round pick in 2018, I believe. So he was supposed to be the starter. Kind of got hurt and never panned out. He didn't have the best training camps. And then Chris Carson stepped in. He was the starting running back. And then Penny finally started to get good last year and then tore his ACL at like the worst possible time. I felt bad for him because he finally started to break out, had some good games, and then he got hurt. So I felt bad for the guy. Hopefully he comes back in the future and is still good. I think the talent is there for Rashad Penny, but we'll see if he gets the amount of uh, carries and just the playing time necessary for that to happen. And of course, staying healthy is a major thing for him as well. Next for below average, we start with Tariq Cohen. So Cohen's a guy that I think has one of the most exciting like highlight tapes in football. He's just so quick and elusive, but like 
in terms of being just a full running back and just being an all-around running back, I just don't see it with him. I don't want to say he's too small because, like, that's the obvious thing to say, but, like, he's not the best between the tackles guy. He balances way too many runs outside. I think his vision's a bit, you know, mm. Not that great sometimes, but uh, very exciting player. Can take any play to the house, but like I just think overall he's a bit below average. He took a step back from his rookie year. Maybe year three will be better for him, but I just was not too impressed last year. 2018, I saw a lot of good things, but last year was disappointing for sure. Next to him is Adrian Peterson. So I'm talking about the 2020 Adrian Peterson. Obviously, the guy's a Hall of Famer, one of the best running backs of all time. But 2020's AP is not that great of a player. In 2018, he was still pretty good, had over 1,000 yards, took a step back last year. And I'm projecting that even as we go further now, and as, as he gets up there more in age, he'll probably be worse next year, honestly. So... Not sure if he even make the team because I think that's Darius Geis' backfield to lose. And if, if Geis gets hurt again, then maybe, you know, maybe AP benefits once again from a Geis injury. But if he's healthy, I don't see the point of keeping Adrian Peterson around. So we'll see if he even makes the team. Next to him is uh, Jamal Williams. So Williams is still a Packer. He's a guy that's a great pass blocker, but never really impressed me talent-wise as a running back. Um, sometimes I'll come in for, for Aaron Jones on third down and long situations, but doesn't really impress me as a running back honestly next to him is Carlos Hyde so Hyde's a guy that went to the Texans last year got a lot of carries I think had some good numbers based off his volume he wasn't too efficient and I feel like he's probably not that good anymore he's 29 30 now he might have like one more decent year left in the tank but outside of that I don't see anything beyond next year for him Next to him is Devonta Freeman. So Freeman's a guy that I wisely stayed away from in fantasy football last year. I was not on the Devonta Freeman train. He was pretty healthy for the most part, had a couple of decent games, but like he was pretty awful as a running back. His yards per carry was terrible, and now he's like at the point where he's begging for a contract, basically, I saw yesterday. So not sure which which team wants him, but he definitely fell off. I watched a uh, Falcons game from like 2017 recently, And he was such a different player. Like, I don't know what happened to him. I guess the injuries finally caught up to him. But he was such a different player a few years ago. But now he looks like a shell of his former self. Next to him is Deion Lewis. So Lewis is 30 or 29 years old now. Had a really good career for the Patriots at some points. His numbers weren't that great on the Titans, but he was behind Derrick Henry. Uh, Still an above average receiving back. Kind of like Shane Vereen was later in his career for the Giants, actually, coincidentally. But... He's an alright player, I would say below average overall, but a pretty good receiving back, a good veteran. And then next to him is Jalen Samuels. So Jalen Samuels, Jalen Samuels was uh, not a good running back last year, a pretty good receiver, I guess you can call him, but just between the tackles was not efficient at all. He had some ugly numbers at some points, and uh, I know the uh, Steelers offense struggled as a whole last year, so maybe it'll get better with Roethlisberger being back, but when he was a starter last year, I was not too impressed. He had some games with a lot of receptions, but he was not too efficient, to be honest. And finally, for bad slash out of prime, First one, I have Frank Gore, who's now with the Jets. So he played a lot for the uh, Bills last year. And he had some all right moments, but for the most part, I would not want Frank Gore at in 2020 once again as my starting running back. It's the same thing as Adrian Peterson. Good running back throughout his career, but like in 2020, I would not want him as a starter in my opinion. Next to him is Benny Snell. So Snell for the Steelers last year had a couple of moments where he was a starter because of injuries, but like he was so inefficient and so bad. I would not want him as a starter. Next to him is Patrick Laird. I don't know if it was the Dolphins situation and that team being bad, but his yards per carry had to be terrible last year. TJ Yeldon, a I guess we can call him a bust because he was a second round pick, I believe, a high second round pick. He's been awful. I think he was cut by the Bills last year. I don't even know what team he's on now. He's been a bust. Next to him is Kalen Balaj and Balaj is a guy that definitely is a good athlete, but I don't know if he knows how to play the running back position, to be honest. Like he just is a guy kinda like Miles Sanders, but worse. Like just runs around like a chicken with his head cut off, but like I don't know what he's doing. His yards per carry last year was awful. It might have been somewhere in the ones, honestly. It was very bad. So um he's not a guy I'm counting on next year for sure, especially with Jordan Howard being there now and Matt Breda. Um and lastly is this one hurts because this guy's probably a Hall of Famer. He has a great career, but LaShawn McCoy, he's gotta be out of his prime for sure. There were some moments last year for the Chiefs where he was like a healthy scratch and it just kind of fell down for him. But 
I had a great career with the Eagles, obviously, some really good years with the Bills, but then last year, you can kind of tell he was a a shell of his former self. He lost that explosiveness. He's still pretty shifty, but not as explosive as he used to be, so therefore, I would say I don't want him as a starting running back in 2020. Maybe he could be a backup third down back, but like still, I just think that's the most he can be at this point, so... That's it. That is my running back tier list for 2020. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know which guys I had out of place, which ones I should have had higher or lower, whatever. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you next time.